http colon slash slash www.ufc.com slash blank https colon slash slash my.ufc.com slash account slash loyalty http colon slash slash www.ufc.com Saturday's UFC 226 event is in the books, and now that the dust has settled in Las Vegas, it's time to go to the scorecard to see who the big winners were at T-Mobile Arena. Point one Daniel Cormier HMM, who was the big winner on Saturday night. I guess the guy who made history set up a mega payday before he walks off into the sunset the next year and finally puts some past ghosts to rest is a good choice. Daniel Cormier stunned the world with his knockout of Stipe Myasic, in the process joining Conor McGregor as the only two fighters to hold two UFC titles simultaneously. So if DC was looking for legacy, he got it. And by doing that, it doesn't remove the two blemishes on his record against John Jones, but it does push them into the background when breaking down his career. And if Jones does return before Cormier calls it quits, is there a bigger bad than Jones Cormier 3? Well, maybe Cormier brought less right. The former UFC champ made a big splash when he squared off with Cormier in the octagon after Saturday's bout, and while many have made the feelings known about that confrontation and are not pleased with it, I've said it before and I'll say it again, when it all comes down to it, the fighters have to fight. All the talk and all the hype means nothing when the octagon gate shuts. And if Cormier is going to fight Lesnar, I want to see it. To Anthony Pettis, we've waited a long time to see Anthony Pettis back in the octagon. Not that guy who's shown up over the last couple years, but the guy who was expected to rule the lightweight division for as long as he wanted to back in 2014. That guy was back on Saturday night as he beat a tough Michael Chiesa via submission. It was a signature victory for Showtime, who showed glimpses of past form in his loss to Dustin Poirier last November, but who looked better than ever in a win over Chiesa that should be a confidence booster and the ticket to an even bigger fight the next time out. Point three Dan Hooker Ever since moving to the lightweight division a little over a year ago, Dan Hooker has looked like one of the best fighters at 155 pounds. On Saturday, I think the rest of the division realized it. His first round knockout of Gilbert Burns was the kind of victory that should propel him up the lightweight ladder and into a big fight his next time out, and if you're still not convinced that the hangman is the real deal, hit your UFC Fight Pass account and watch him defeat Ross Pearson, Mark Dyakis and Jim Miller. For Paolo Costa just hearing some of the shots landed by Paolo Costa on Uriah Hall Saturday night would make me want to reconsider my career path if I was a UFC middleweight. And he took some hard shots in return from Hall, but like a Brazilian tank, Costa kept moving forward, determined to end the fight. And he did, just like his three previous UFC bouts. So what could be next for the Eraser? Is it too early or too much to ask the MMA gods for Costa vs Israel Adesanya, 5 Khalil Roundtree Jr.? when I read Gokinsaki's thoughts on Khalil Roundtree Jr. For his UFC bio update, I got intimidated and I wasn't even fighting him. So what did Roundtree think, knowing that he was fighting a decorated kickboxer who had picked out several holes in his game before the two even stepped inside the octagon? Apparently, he did not read this memo from Saki, as he scored a spectacular knockout win that took just 96 seconds. It was vindication for Roundtree, who was a big underdog despite being a talented young man still finding his way in the MMA world. A win like that can do wonders for a fighter, and it will be interesting to see where he goes from here. Watch past fights Anthony Pettis Brock Lesnar Daniel Cormier